Welcome to the Lead Every Day Show. Our mission is to see a world well-led. And our strategy to get there? To empower leaders like you to lead every day. So let's get to work. If you get around the best musicians, athletes, really anybody who's the best in the world at their craft, you'll find that they master the fundamentals. They are maniacal about those things that are going to drive performance. Welcome to the Lead Every Day Show. I'm Randy Gravitt. And I'm Mark Miller. And today we're talking about the fundamentals of leadership as we build on this idea of being on the path to uncommon greatness. Really, it's about uncommon leadership. And Mark, we have discovered that there are five fundamentals, probably more stuff you could do, but these five are are cornerstone fundamentals that make us leaders that people want to follow. They trust our leadership, all that. I'm excited about having this conversation with you. Yeah, I'm excited as well. Uh, the truth that you're going to hear about today and in the, in the weeks to come was really born of some work that we did almost 25 years ago uh, when I was working at Chick-fil-A. We had a team of really smart people. We were trying to figure out how to accelerate leadership development. And our first insight was that we did not know what we wanted leaders to actually do. Yeah. Behaviorally. Yeah. And and through that search, that multi-year project, uh, we came up with some of the content that we'll share with you today. And I'm actually excited about it because it is behavioral. I mean, anybody listening today, you're going to be able to take the things that we talk about over these next few weeks. We're going to we'll give you a glimpse of the model today, but we're going to start unpacking that yeah. tomorrow. And it's 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 highly actionable stuff. I mean, yeah. it's, it, this is really the, if you ask me, this is the job description of any leader. It's 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 pretty exciting as we think about it. So run us yeah. through these fundamentals. Let's let's talk about uh, what what we call the serve model. And it was you you said twenty five years ago. I think you and Ken Blanchard wrote a book together called The Secret. Right. And this the the book was the secret was that the it's majority a, of this content. It, it it is. It's exactly right. And so yeah. I'm 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 pumped about uh, our audience getting to hear some of this stuff. It's it's cool. The serve model's been taught all over the world. Million copies of the book. I mean, lots of copies. A lot of languages. Twenty five languages, I think. Mm -hmm. And and so a lot of lot of leaders have been served well with this content. I think we can help some people here. So let's talk about yeah. the serve model. The, the five fundamentals. Let's hit them hit them pretty quick. The first fundamental is to see the future. Yeah. Leadership always begins with a picture of the future. And this is a process by which a leader weaves together what they know to be true and what they hope to be true. Yeah. And, and from that comes a compelling picture of the future yeah. that you can share with others and rally them to join you on that journey. Yeah, and if you don't have an organiz I mean, or if you don't have a vision for your organization, your team, your family, if you're the leader and you don't you can't see where you're trying to take people, you got very little chance of, of getting to the place you want to go. But if you can take the time to really see the future, cast that vision for the people around you, it that's the starting place, right? Yeah, people always want to know, what are we trying to accomplish? Where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> yeah. What are we trying to become? Yeah. You know, why does it matter? Why does it matter? All I mean, that this, stuff. This is the future that we have the opportunity, and I would argue the responsibility as leaders to articulate that for those yeah, there's a, there's would be a great followers. There's story, some may have heard it, about Walt Disney who – when when they built, uh, I guess it was Disney World down in Florida. He he, they had bought this swamp, and at the grand opening, the story goes that he, Walt had actually died before that, and his wife Lillian was there, and a reporter sticks a microphone in her face and says, "Don't you wish Walt were here to see this?" And she makes a statement without blinking. Walt did see this. That's why it's here, and that's what you're talking about. It's just this vision of. What are we trying to build? What are we trying to do? So that that's the that's the S and that's yeah. the first fundamental. Yeah, and just, and just a quick word. A lot of leaders are are intimidated by this first fundamental. And I would say yeah, there is a weight, a weightiness to it because people are uh, waiting on right. you right. to tell them where are we trying to go, what are we trying to become, where are we, you know, what are we trying to achieve. But I see it more as a responsibility yeah. than than a weight. I do run into and an opportunity. Yeah, I do run into leaders all the time that say my leader doesn't have a vision for what we're doing, and it's like. It's, and so here's what I would say: yeah. a leader without a vision is not leading. That's right. Now they may be managing. That's right. Which again is another noble profession. Yeah. It's a skill set. That's right. But, but if, it's you, different. If, if you don't have a vision, you're not leading. 
Okay, so after we have a vision, uh, hopefully, you said it a few weeks, days ago, whatever, that our vision is bigger than what we can do on our own. We're going to need some people to help us. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the second fundamental. The second fundamental is to engage and develop others. And, and the, the, the essence of this is the leader has an opportunity to help people care deeply about the work, the co-workers, the customer, and the organization. That's the engagement part. Yeah, that, that's really what this is about, yeah. is, is helping them care, and that's how you engage. And develop others matters because that's helping to prepare for the future, but development is also a strategy for driving engagement. This is when people decide, are they going to follow you? They're going to go with you. Are yeah. they going to? with you yeah, that's or so, not. That's so great. Yeah. Okay, so we live in a world that is rapidly changing, and it's the complexity is crazy. Technology's all over the place. I mean, all that's going on leads us to the third fundamental. There's the, the, Talk, talk the about that. The third fundamental is to reinvent continuously. Not reinvent one time and check the box. Reinvent <laughs> like, continuously. This is the job. This is the job. Uh, a lot of leaders, unfortunately, look at change as a burden or as an obstacle, then I would say change is your job in, in service of progress, in service of performance. But if you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you always That's got, right? right? Yep. Or something less. Yep. The best leaders know that progress is always preceded by change. That's good. That's so good. And so we've encouraged our leaders for decades to reinvent in at least three domains. And we'll, yep. we'll go we'll, deeper we'll later. We'll get into those. But That's good. To reinvent yourself. Yep to reinvent systems and work processes yeah. and to reinvent structure. Yeah. And as you as you change those things in in service of, of, of a the goal vision. and the, the vision, vision yeah. you mo you move towards it with greater pace and certainty. Yeah, that's great. Okay. So fundamental number 4, what 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 is that? Is value results and relationships. Okay. Now, I would argue that this is probably the most difficult for all of the folks listening. Now, oh. Uh, I, I, I say why. all the folks, for, for most of the folks listening, which might sound a bit audacious because obviously I don't know who's listening, yeah. but here's what I know. I've been sharing this content with leaders around the whole world for over 20 years, and this is the most challenging. Yeah. And the reason it's so challenging is that virtually every leader has a natural bias. You're either more results-oriented or you're more relationship-oriented. Now, there's a small percentage, I'm estimating at about 5% of leaders, who have an equal measure of results and relationship bias, yeah. and I don't even like those people. Well, it's, it's actually interesting. There was a study done, and I think they asked 2,000 leaders, which way does your boss lean, and less than 1%, which, if the math is right, that's less than 20 of the 2,000 said they're kind of lean both ways. They, right. they would lean this way or that way. So it's, right. it's less than 5%. I mean, okay. it's, yes. it's like, they're, so, you, you, if you're listening, you probably lean one way or the other. You're either a people yeah. person or you're a task person. However you want to give language to that, right. but you lean one way or the other when, when it comes to r results versus relationships. But here's the magic. Notice the language. The best leaders value both results and relationships. I don't, I don't, suppose for a moment that we could or should try to change you try to be both or that you should change me yeah. but you have to value both yeah i think it's a perfect example of what jim collins talks about when he talks about the genius of the and yeah when you find two things that from time to time may actually even be in conflict yeah. and you find a way to pursue them both and value both you unleash tremendous potential yeah and so that's what we're we're going to encourage leaders and try to equip leaders. How do you raise the value yeah. of that which you don't do naturally well? Yeah, and I'd we say, think we can help you with yeah, that. Yeah, we'll talk about that. I'd say today, just go ahead and start thinking about your bias. Which yeah. way do you lean? Are you more so, results-oriented or relationship-oriented? Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. Okay, so the fifth one... Um, is is to embody a leader's heart. Say say something about that one, Mark. We 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 know this is a really this important is huge. idea. This is huge to embody a leader's heart. Uh, when we first created this content years ago, we came up with a picture of an iceberg, and we said that's a really good representation of leadership. About ten percent is above the waterline, and about ninety percent is below the waterline, and and you need you need both skills and heart in order to lead well. 
And so this embody a leader's heart is about the 90% below the waterline. But it is so critical. Yeah. Because if your heart's not right, no one cares about your skills. Nobody gives a rip about your skills. That's right. So, yeah. so yeah, we'll unpack that as we go. Well, as you think about your own leadership today, as we as we land this episode, I want to encourage you to maybe even go back through those fundamentals. You might just write them down to to see the future, to engage and develop others, to reinvent continuously, to value results and relationship, and to embody a leader's heart. Is there a gap right now in your own way you think about leadership, and maybe even in your organization or your team? You're, you're like. I'm not sure we're, we're, we're getting that one the way we need to. This really is your job description. And as Mark said, over these next few days and weeks, we're going we're gonna to give you some more things to think about here with this as we unpack this content. If you've not pre-ordered the book, I encourage you to do that. February 27th, Mark, release date. I'm excited about Uncommon Greatness coming out. And we also have a free Uncommon Greatness assessment. And if you'll text the word Uncommon, to 66866. We'll give you a free copy of that Uncommon Greatness Assessment, and you'll you'll actually get a picture of what you need to work on first, maybe, as you start this journey with us over these next few weeks. And that's available It'll now. It'll be great. It's available now. Yeah, you the, book's, ahead, book's coming, the book's coming, but the assessment's But the assessment now. is already ready. Again, Uncommon to 66866. We'll put that in the show notes for you. Thanks for listening, for downloading. You're helping us grow the show. We're, we're excited about that. Please continue to share with your friends and family. Let's, let's keep chasing uncommon greatness together we think we think it's really the right path to be on it'll make all the difference in our organizations remember the best leaders lead every day 